James Cotton's Blues in My Sleep. Now, I'm sure you'll agree that slow blues on the harmonica doesn't come much more expressive than this. There's a lot that we can learn from how he approaches this track. So in this video, I'm going to be unpacking some of the things that he's doing, showing you all the little nuances that he's using and how he attacks some of these really cool phrases. So grab your A harp and let's get stuck into it. Okay, cool. So he's starting with this little pickup. It's quite a, a common kind of stock bluesy pickup for a slow blues. You hear guitarists and, and harp players bring tracks in with that sort of lick all the time. But it's, it's not just about the way that, you know, not just about the notes that he's playing here. It's the way that he is playing them, the dynamics and the attack that he's using. So we're starting on the two draw and then going up the major pentatonic scale. So three draw, four draw. And there's a little scoop, so coming up from a bend on that three draw. And then he's playing the five blow as an octave or a tongue split. So two and five blow together, just to, to beef that up. And then he's going into a five draw with a tongue flutter. So he's playing that five draw as a tongue blocked single note. So putting his tongue down over holes three and four, playing hole five out of the right hand corner of his mouth. And then just lifting his tongue on and off of the harp to quickly cover and uncover holes three and four like this. So it's like saying la 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 with your tongue kind of blocking the, those two holes to the left. So we've got this lick here. I forgot to put the octave in. And obviously it doesn't matter if, you know, if like I did there, you, you don't play something as an octave that he did play as an octave or, you know, this is an improvised 12 bar blues instrumental. He could probably have played this song a hundred times and every time it would be a little bit different. So me showing you what he's doing here isn't so much about you learning to play this song note for note. That's not the point. The point is to take some of the key licks that really resonate with you and the general idea and approach and attack that he's using so you can play your own improvised slow blues um, in this style without necessarily copying note for note what James Cotton is doing. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so coming down from that tongue flutter on the whole five. We've got draw two and five as an octave, or well, not an octave, but a, a tongue split. Draw two and five, then blow three and six, which is an octave. Back to the draw two and five. And then we've got this lick here, which I call the slide lick. Um, this is something that I, I cover in my course. It's in just about every single blues harmonica tune in one form or another. Okay, so I'm playing a draw four and five double stop. That just means holes four and five together. And I'm scooping up into that from the four bend. So it kind of sounds like you're saying, wah. Okay, and then I'm bending back down into the four bend. And then sliding along to hole three, and then landing on hole two. And 
and I'm putting a lot of throat vibrato on that two draw. Listen to his vibrato here. It's quite a short note that draw two, but he still gets the vibrato in on it. Another important point here is the way that he's using dynamics. Now, this is something that, you know, a, a lot of beginner intermediate players tend to overlook. It's one thing, you know, getting the tab for a song and knowing what notes to play, but unless you pay attention to all these little nuances like the scoops and the dynamics, it's not going to sound like it does when James Cotton plays it. So he's starting that, that slide lick really loud, really aggressive on the four and five double stop. And then as he lands on that draw two, he's pulling it right back. And the whole band are going with him on this. They're kind of going from, from 10 to, to one in volume all the way through this track. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so here he's really just using the, the minor pentatonic scale. It's a little scoop on that four draw. There. And then he kind of repeats the same phrase again getting more sort of frustrated and angry sounding with it. So notice he leaves a lot of space before he goes into that lick the second time. Never really important thing. Um, so he plays that first lick. Something like that and then leaves the space, and then when he attacks that lick again, he plays it a bit more aggressive. Something along those lines. So he's making it more aggressive, partly by just playing louder, but also by glissandoing into the first note of the phrase and making some of the notes double stops. Now, this is a really key thing in, in James Cotton's style, especially. Um, he very often, instead of just playing that three-draw half-step bend, he will play three-draw half-step bend with hole four added in there. And that's how he gets that big, kind of crunchy, distorted sound. Notice he's not... Um, using an amp here you know this is just a an sm58 or similar kind of you know clean vocal mic but he gets that gritty aggressive sound <laughs> by the use of of double stops and combining that with with his throat vibrato so on that last phrase there where he's kind of getting all sort of frustrated and, and repeating the lick <laughs> I would not try to copy exactly what he's doing note for note there. I mean, you could sit down, slow that down, and, and tab it out note for note if you really wanted to. But the chances are, if you did that and played it the same as him, it's not going to have the same impact and the same kind of aggressive attack as when he plays it, because he's not playing something note for note off of a piece of paper. He's connecting emotionally with the sound, um, using a, a general idea and embellishing it and improvising around it on the spot. So that's what we want to do too, is, is take the general idea and embellish it and, and just see what we can come up with. <laughs> Just play around with it. Um, again, this is all stuff I go into in my course, how to, to take a scale and take a lick and, 
and, and use the scale to improvise around it so you can make up your own licks. And, um, you know, w when you learn a lick from a record, you can get kind of infinite licks out of it by playing about with it, changing it up a little bit. Let's move on. So again, you know, great use of dynamics here. He couldn't really play much quieter than that if, if he tried. The, the band have almost stopped playing <laughs> in that last bar. <laughs> you can kind of hear the sound of his like lips moving on, on the harp. It's so quiet. Again, he's scooping up into the trill from a three bend. If you don't put the scoop on it, it's not going to sound right. So um, he's going as quiet as you can possibly play on these trills. Like, see how quiet you, you can get your volume whilst, you know, still producing sound. That's how quiet he's playing here. Right, let's move on. Okay, so this is probably one of my favorite turnaround licks of all time. Again, comes in really loud, really aggressive, and then backs it right off. So he's coming in on this three and four double stop. Um, now the way I would approach this is like a, a draw three half step bend, but then just let a little bit of hole four in as well. So the draw four is giving it that kind of distorted, gritty quality. If you put the draw three on its own, with the vibrato, it sounds cool, but if you include a bit of whole four in there, you get that really big, aggressive James Cotton kind of sound. So, he's going from that double stop to a blow four, quickly back to a draw three, and then just scooping up into the draw four to lead us into the five chord. Then he does the same lick again, but with the, the slide lick that I talked about tacked on the end of it. So that's draw four, bend the four down, and slide along to draw two. Now, when he's hitting the, the four blow here as well, um, he's not actually hitting that as, as a single note either. He's kind of opening up to, to play like four and five together. I think it's just four and five together. It could be three, four and five, four, five and six. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, so we've got and then a little rest. And he does that, that lick twice with the, the slide run on it. And then he's going into the two draw whole step bend. And then at the end there, he's going two, three, two, one, two, one, two, or, or draw. And he's quite quiet and, and quite kind of clean single notes on that last bit. So it's a good contrast to the, the rest. <laughs> So again, it's all about dynamics, all about the way you attack these notes, all the little nuances. Then the end of the turnaround here. We've got that draw three and four double stop again. Not quite as aggressive this time. 
Then he's hitting the one and four octave. That's one and four blow. And then back to the two draw. Nice fat tone, a little bit of throat vibrato. And then he's going down to the, the two whole step bend and the one draw. And then we're into the next 12 bars. Great. So what he's doing here, um, he's really making the most of, of the full range of, of bend that's available to us in, in that two draw. So this lick starts with um, one blow, one draw, then draw two, then draw one, and then straight into that draw two whole step bend. And he's letting that bend come up really gradually. And this is something that I think a lot of harp players don't think about or, you know, kind of forget to, to use in their playing. So it's not just about being able to hit this note and that note and the one in the middle. It's about the full range. All the microtones um, between this point and, and that point. Um, again, this is all stuff I go into in my course, um, the Ultimate Blues Harmonica Soloist course. Um, I've got lots of exercises to help you really get this stuff dialed in. But um, basically, if you think of your two draw as being like an E vowel, so think in your head E as you're playing that two draw, and then think of the, the two draw whole step bend as being an OR mouth shape, so e -o. we want to transition back towards E from OR as gradually as possible, so o -e. okay, so practice bending that, that note up and down as slowly and as gradually as possible, it's going to help you get a lot more expression into your playing. Amazing. So he's kind of taking that idea to another level here. <laughs> So a lot of that in between there is essentially, you know, out of tune. It's um, kind of be between pitches. But this is what makes it really expressive because the whole time that he's hovering in that... You're just waiting for him to resolve... back to that, that root note in, in the two draw. If he never resolved it there, then he just finished kind of out of tune, <laughs> then, you know, that would just be a wrong note. But the way that he's using it, that there are no wrong notes. You know, it's all about the context, how you use them, where you put them. So you can linger in that, that area. For as long as you want, as long as you eventually resolve to the right place, all it's going to do is create tension that you can eventually resolve. Um, Buddy Guy does this all the time on, on the guitar as well, so a really cool expressive thing to, to use. Um, 
Listen to his vibrato there. <laughs> <laughs> so he's kind of glissandoing into that three draw half step bend he's also scooping into it a little bit so he's not going immediately in at the the three half step he's going in around about the whole step and scooping scooping up to the half step um one advantage of that is that you don't have to be as precise. You know, it's quite difficult to go straight in and hit that half step bend. Um, but it actually sounds much cooler, I think, if you start lower and adjust up to it. And then you can let your ear tell you when you've reached that note. So he's getting the bend. And then... <laughs> bringing in this, this throat vibrato. And then he's back into that kind of frustrated, angry James Cotton thing that he does, <laughs> wailing around that, that four and five draw. Adding a bit of hand wire there too. We've got the same turnaround as before. Again, being really dynamic, coming in really aggressive and loud with those double stops. And then backing right off when he hits that four draw at the end of the phrase. <laughs> and there, backing off when you, when you resolve on that two draw. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to check out my Blues Harmonica course, I'll put a link below. My name's Will Wild. I'll see you soon. Cheers.